My biggest complaint, anything from like 1980 forward, is all of the engine bays are so ugly because they're full of crap. They are full of emissions equipment, full of wires. There's really no thought or care taken to making an aesthetically pleasing engine bay. It's, it's never going to be the same as opening the engine bay on a muscle car from the 60s. But after years and years of work, I do think I've created a pretty good looking engine bay, especially considering what I started with. I still clearly remember the first day that I got my 350Z and one of the first things I did, of course, was pop the hood to look at the engine and honestly it was a little lackluster and disappointing to open it up and I've got that big plastic cover in the front of the engine it's just kind of some aluminum plenum that I didn't even know what that was at the time there's all sorts of crap over here a big ugly air box that was designed in a computer just for simplicity of manufacturing there really wasn't a whole lot of good things to look at and that was when I started my quest to try to improve the engine bay and make this something that when I pop the hood it gets people's attention so obviously this is not going to be for everyone. You can't go quite this far in a normal everyday driven car. For most people, it's just not worth it. So a lot of people will do dress up kits and cover panels and things like that. And that's fine if that's what you wanna do. I'm gonna go through and try to give y'all a guide of exactly what I did to improve my engine bay. Firstly, you're gonna have to remove the battery and put it in the trunk. Because by doing that, you have a big area right here that you're opening up to move things that you don't wanna see. So like my catch can is in there, my coolant overflow tank is in there, and then of course all of the things that Nissan already hid in there, like, like the fuse box on this side and your brake master cylinder on the other side and all your brake lines. So those are already hidden for you, so the Nissan did help you a little bit there. So that clears up all of this area right here. Now I also deleted my power steering, which again, not for most people, but that cleared up right here underneath this silicone hose. So I don't have a power steering pump, I don't have the reservoir, I don't have the cooler in the front. I've got all of that equipment moved out of the way. Of course, I deleted my AC compressor because it's a race car. I do not need AC anymore, so all of that's gone. And not only does it remove the compressor on the driver's side, it removes the lines that were coming from the condenser up into the cabin. So that's removing that. As I've covered in multiple cooling videos, how I simplified the cooling system by removing all of the stuff that was designed for emissions or for heating the cabin or for any unnecessary things that I do not need on my car and it's simplified to two large silicone hoses and the swirl pot. Now of course I have this giant duct here that was only recently added and while I think it looks amazing it does cover up a lot of the front of the engine but I was able to clean up any unnecessary barbs on the front of the engine, anything that I was not using, any threaded holes that I was not using, any unnecessary equipment, all the mount points for brackets and wires that went across the front of the engine, those have been removed. As you may be able to notice, I've done a wire tuck, a pretty extensive one, so all my wiring is tucked up under the plenum where I can, and a lot of it is hidden behind the plenum, so I don't have any wiring going across the front of the engine, I don't have any wiring that's going over here on the strut towers. All of that has been moved, so not only does it make a better looking engine bay, it makes it easier to work on things. And you're moving all of that wiring that was on the front of the engine to the back, it helps weight distribution a little bit, because the wiring does actually have some some pretty considerable weight to it and then obviously I've painted some things so like the whole engine bay is white I've got the entire cover it was a little dirty cleaned that up painted it silver painted the valve covers yellow so everything in this engine bay is gonna be silver white black or yellow that is it or of course the carbon fiber so all my bolt heads like on the strut tower are painted black all of my hoses are black all my wire covers have a nice split braided loom so that it looks nice and neat my grounding kit is black of course all the hosing for the intake is black or carbon fiber and then everything else on it is silver like the hose clamps so try and pick a theme and keep it nice and neat and simple coming over to the driver's side we can see that we have more carbon fiber more black more silver more white and a little bit of yellow tucked in here. And as you can see, you can't see any wires. We have the one wire tucked down here, which is in a nice loom, and then we've got the wires for all of the ignition coils tucked up underneath the plenum. Of course, if you're curious how I did that, I covered my wire tuck in another video. I'll link that in the description. So while I am normally always on about making everything as functional as possible, it's okay to take a little bit of time to make a good looking race car. It's gonna be a lot more difficult to get people to sponsor you, to get people to crew for you, to get people to drive with you, to get people to take your car seriously if it looks like crap. 
Now, obviously, that's not everything. If you put down fast lap times, that's gonna make up for it, but still, just make your job easier, and it makes it so much more fun for me to work on this car. Every time I lift the hood off, I get a lot of reactions from other people, and it still gets a reaction out of me. Now, everything looks a lot better on camera. If you get up close, you can see there's some rough spots. Everything's not perfect and clean and immaculate like a show car, but it's not a show car, it's a race car, but it is a well-engineered one, and the attention to detail and the care that shows here is going to reflect in other parts of the car, including your driving. So of course, if you guys have any questions, you want any sort of tips, or you want me to point you in a certain direction, of course, drop that below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.